Well, hey everybody, and welcome back to D Ray Shop. Well, a few years ago, I did a video about my old shop truck where I had a cam and lifter failure. And I kind of chronicled all some of the problems and things I ran into in repairing that truck. And I also said that on down the road, I would do a follow up video to uh, show how the, the cam operation went, uh, if there was any notable difference in performance and fuel economy, things like that. And I just wanted to kind of do like a long term thing just to see how well it held up. Well, uh, about five years and close to 50,000 miles later, here we are. <laughs> so let's get started. Okay, so uh, to give a little backstory, I had a, a cam and lifter failure on this truck uh, back around 2012. And uh, uh, I'll drop reference to the video in, that I did on how to what I ran into on the cam. And I ended up going with an aftermarket camshaft, mainly because the original GM cam was on factory back, it was on factory back order, and so it wasn't available. And I ended up getting hooked up with a company down in Louisiana called Cam Motion, where they custom CNC grind camshafts for all kinds of racing applications. And they custom ground me a cam that had just a little bit more lift and duration, right about right around 30 thousandths, if I remember correctly. And uh, so I replaced everything, got it all back together. And uh, the only real problems I ran into, uh, and I may have mentioned this in the video prior, was uh, exhaust manifold bolts. When I actually went to take the exhaust manifolds off, I had one bolt that was already, had been missing, the head was gone. And I actually broke off two more in the process. And what I've learned is that those bolts over time, from repeatedly getting heated and cooled, they become embrittled and they finally just get so fragile and they just break. So I replaced all the exhaust manifold bolts. Of course, I replaced all the head bolts because you can't reuse those. Uh, drilled out the broken bolts out of the heads, uh, replaced the spark plugs, serviced the valves, new valve guide seals, new head gaskets, cam lifter set. Everything went back together great and uh, didn't really run into any problems. One thing that I did notice, just normal day-to-day -day driving, couldn't really tell any difference at all. Uh, what I could tell performance wise was when I was pulling my camper. Now I've got a, a 30 foot bumper pull camper, uh, weighs approximately 8,600 pounds. And uh, where we live at in Judsonia, we're about 50 miles north and east of Little Rock. And occasionally we make a trip down to Louisiana to visit a buddy of mine, old Tommy TC71291. And uh, what I found prior to replacing the camshaft is I couldn't hold 65, 70 miles an hour down the interstate on flat level ground with it in overdrive. It slowly lose, lose momentum and then finally it would kick out of overdrive and rev back up and then you'd accelerate back up and kick into overdrive again and it would slowly lose ground. With this new camshaft in it, I can run 65, 70 miles an hour in overdrive and no problems at all, it, it done fine. The other thing that was really kind of a surprise, a pleasant surprise, was that my original fuel economy was right around 10 and a half miles to the gallon. And once I put this new camshaft in it, I was running somewhere between 11.8 to 12, just depending on how I was driving and where I was driving. So, so overall, that was a, a real good thing. Now, here we are now, it's over 50,000 miles now. Since I did repair, the truck's got about 163, 164,000 miles on it. Absolutely no problems, had no noises. I couldn't ask for the thing to run any better. Uh, so I thought I'd just do a quick follow-up video to let you know how all this ended up turning out and uh, from, a, from a long point, long test standpoint, I guess. Uh, and of course, I also have another reason why I'm having to post this video because after owning this truck since uh, 2010, uh, I have decided to retire it. As a matter of fact, I had it up for sale on Craigslist here a couple weeks ago. And I have a gentleman that's supposed to come by tomorrow and pick it up and take it home. <laughs> so this is going to be his new truck to pull his camper with. He's got a smaller camper than mine, but he's been pulling it with a half-ton truck, and it really doesn't pull it all that well. So, And he knows the size camper I've been pulling with mine. So he came out and drove it, and uh, I've known the guys buying it. I've known him for a long time, so he knows what he's getting. So, uh, so yeah, I guess uh, say goodbye to the old shop truck. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I'll show you the replacement. So just hang loose. Yeah, we're going from a 2007 
Silverado Classic to a 2015 2500 HD Silverado LTZ. Now this truck is going to be basically a newer version of what I've got. It's still going to have the 6 liter gas burner engine in it, uh, but it has uh, the multi-speed transmission. I think it's got like a 5, 6 speed transmission in it. Uh, 6 liter gets way better gas mileage, uh, has a higher towing capacity. Uh, it pulls my camper no problem at all. I really love this truck. Wasn't really looking to get an LTZ, but uh, in Arkansas it's hard to find good clean gas burner trucks. I actually went to uh, Dallas, Texas, flew to Dallas and found that truck and drove it home. And uh, I've had it for about a month now and I, I really like it. So I've decided to keep it and I'm uh, going to say goodbye to the old gray ghost. Uh, it's been a good truck. It's done me real well and I'm sure the gentleman that's buying it is going to have good, good use out of it. It's a good old clean straight truck, no dents, no rust, and I've just babied that thing. It's, uh, it's never been abused, but uh, it's been a good one. Alrighty guys, well that's going to wrap up this episode of D-Race Shop. Uh, sorry it took so long to do a follow up on the old cam thing. It's just uh, a good problem that we have here at the shop nowadays is I don't get the opportunity to do the videos like I used to. Uh, Randy and I stay completely covered up. We usually have an average of anywhere from 10 to 20, sometimes as high as 30 machines in here at any given time. So it leaves very little time to do videos. We do plan to do more in the future. Uh, we're just going to have to start being a little more picky and choosy about the machines that we take in so we can have a little more free time to do videos. I know I've had a lot of people that's, that's asked, you know, if, if I'm going to continue to do them. Yes, we do have intentions to do videos. We have several subjects that we already want to cover. It's just a matter of getting the time to set up and shoot those videos because they do take quite a bit of time to to shoot and edit and all that but we will get them done and as always leave me some comments in the comment section below and uh, swing by the shop again you never know what we're going to work on next all right guys as always appreciate y'all watching y'all have a good one we'll catch y'all next time around